stuff going here now. Just so you can see how it looks on the other side. We'll go here, uh, we'll go to the show, so I want you to see how it's looking there. So you actually recording it right now? Uh, yeah, we're recording right now. Uh, recording live is a rough, rough cut, so to speak. <laughs> You're gonna see all the dirty stuff going in. How long have you been doing that? I've been doing broadcast TV stuff for about 20 years. Been doing this show for about a week now. So there you go. Got you on. So you usually stay here, or you go all the way around. Uh, we're just doing it right here for right now, man. Get things started off right here, and then we're gonna branch off and see where it takes us from there. Monitor what's going on. I didn't have the feedback. There is Bluetooth. Alright. My super's up on it. You gotta sit down and talk? Yeah, sit down and talk. I have a seat. I'm coming right here. I'll listen to you. You're already on there, right there, huh? Hey, point that thing. That's lit. Add the super recording. Now they say you can get all the home time you want, but you can't afford to go home. I know. You can't afford. Man, I miss my daughter's wedding. Oh, see, you know, you need to talk to us. We can help that out, help you out on that. I mean, one of the things I have, or one of the things with the company I have. It's a way for you to uh, be able to check out things video-wise. You got a video phone, works over the internet. You got one there. You got one here. She could have taken it to your daughter's wedding, even though you were out on the road. You could be there. You can see it and everything else. Yeah, the feel and touch. And, you know, it's just hey, man, it. I understand. I agree with you completely on that. But it's at least one way of getting you a little bit closer than what you normally would have. You know, the feel and the touch is good, but you know. Connecting to the sight and the sound is a little bit better than not even being able to do that at all. Yeah. Thank see, which camera do we have you on here? Hey, it's broadcasting over the internet right now. Once I get this camera back up, that camera died. That's why it froze on us. Hey, is this your car? Yeah, that's my car. Okay, I'm leaning on it. All right. <laughs> I don't want to lean on the wrong person's car, you know? Yeah, I appreciate that. I don't want to lean on the wrong person's car, you know? There we go. And we got it rolling. So tell me a little bit, man. What's your name, first of all? John. John. And where are you from, John? I'm from uh, Sykeston, Missouri. Okay. You hold the microphone. Tell us a little bit about your story, John, and what's going on for you out there on the open road. Well, uh, I don't know. I'm a... Just a driver. I drive over the road all 48 states. I got a pretty good company uh, that I work for. I'm home every weekend and usually twice during the week. And I'm still running about 2,500 miles. If you ask anybody, that's pretty much a dream job. Eh? <laughs> so you like being out on the open road, man? Yeah, yeah. I own a truck. Me and my dad own a trucking company called Motorway Express for uh, for several years. And, Drivers know that they can quit and get another job tomorrow, and uh, so it was hard to keep drivers. So fuel went up, you know, which got me because it's always been cheaper than than gas anyway, you know. Uh -huh. But uh, now it's not. It's now now it's not. Yeah. Well, it's a byproduct of making yeah. gas. That's when you get that coke. Yeah, that don't make much sense, but uh. We shut, we shut the doors. I went and dispatched for another company. Didn't like it. And decided the only way to really make some money is I'm a driver myself. Okay. So, so I went to a school. But you got to go to the school now. And I, I went to work for one of the bigger companies. We came to train for a while. And I got my experience in. And the guy at home said that he had a yeah, he can get me home every weekend. I got eight-year-old boys. So. 
it, it works out pretty good because I go through there a lot. If I have to have any time off, it's real good. But working for the bigger companies, you know, you get a number. You know, the company I work for, they're really good about getting me home on my home time request. But if something come up, you know, you just have to, you just, you know, screw. They, they don't care. Right. But working for the smaller, yeah, working they for all, the smaller they company care. is more so where it's at for yeah. you? Yeah, the smaller company. Uh, that's not all cases. You know, there's some bigger companies. But, uh. My dad, he's still got some trucks, and it's on with Jamie Hunt, that's the owner operator, power only. And uh, his driver's only getting about between 1,100 and 1,800 miles a week right now. Uh, you know, so that that's the starving his driver. Right. And it's starving him. You know, it's just a, I don't know. They say it's all gonna get better. It's all gonna get better. So what do you think it's going to take to turn things around for, for the truckers and the trucking industry and, and ultimately for America? Because, I mean, I look at you guys, you're out there on the road. No matter how the freight moves, it doesn't get to the to the store for it to get off the shelf without a truck wow. delivering it to the door. So, you know, I know, and I, I'm trying to help America know that it, unless a truck driver is taking it there, you know, something's wrong. You know, if you guys aren't moving it, that means freight ain't moving. You know, things aren't moving through the country. And if you guys are having tough times, that's the perfect barometer that the rest of the country is going to have tough times. Because you guys can't take it in for them to buy if they're not ordering it in the stores. And we're all feeling it. It's like, you guys are the first line. Well, some drivers do real good. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it has to do with the planners and all that stuff. You know, if the planners got several drivers that they really like or, right. or whatever, well, they'll keep them on certain runs, and everybody else should get the cleanup, you know, which will hurt them in the long run because drivers won't stay. You know, they'll be tired of starving with that, and they'll go to another company with big dreams and start them there, you know. Right. It's, uh, yeah, that and uh, the DOT, I mean, they, they uh, put rules and regulations on you where you can't make any money. Yeah, you can you make some money back in the late 70s, 80s, uh, but you can't make money now. Well, actually, uh, you got to be on the road constantly before you can make any money. Yeah, you know? and there's no family. You got kids, wife. What happens, man? You don't see them unless you can get on the internet somewhere and do web uh, conferencing. You know? Yeah, well, you know, like I said, that's that's one of the things my company is trying to help out. Well, uh, five links. We got a webcam that's designed to work over the internet. Winds up uh, for a flat fee. You can take that unit. It's got your phone number on it. Wherever you go to hook up, you hook up on the internet. You call back home. Your family can call you. They got uh, the webcam box on the other side. You can see them and talk to them. If they don't, unlimited call. You know, you can call them and talk to them almost any place. Well, in that's the world. good. You know, but I mean, you look back in the like you said, the seventies and eighties. They uh, they didn't have all the all the telephones and stuff like this. You know. We actually got it pretty good compared to what they had it back then. We yeah, got power got steering, it. we got air conditioning. <laughs> uh, right? You, know? you got cell phones, not just the CB radio now, so you can call and talk to them. You don't have to worry about a good atmospheric condition to try to skip to a base station back home, right? Yeah. Relay. Right? Yeah, relay. Yeah, they don't have that stuff anymore. They got it, but don't know about you, you know. Right? I don't know. I think they could use more truck parking. That's for sure. Absolutely. You know, they nice park. Well, you know, yeah, like this place, you got to pay 10 bucks to, to park overnight. But, you know, the, the other truck stops, they fill up so quick, so you're stuck paying for parking. And, uh, you know, they DOT don't want you to run over your hours, but then, you know, you're running through the truck stops, you're circling, circling, circling. You know, it's, yeah. they do need to have, you know, they got a lot of rest areas, but they need to make more. You know, they, they, even if it's just truck parking. They're, they're close to rest areas. Yeah. Even if it's just an open parking lot for drivers to stop, you know, with some trash cans out there so they don't layer it all up. But, right. You know, but I think that's one thing they need to do for drivers. That'll help them plan their loads better. Uh-huh. So if you're going to send a message back to President Obama, what, what would you tell them that you, that you needed? 
Well, the infrastructure on drivers having places to park should be, should be worked on a little. Right. How are the roads looking out there? Are the roads holding up? That's one of the big things. Yeah, you hear everybody talking about them. Oh, oh yeah, we're going to get that in there for you. <laughs> for the most part, yeah. They're actually pretty good. See, we got we got the super up there. So we got we'll your through. name and name and address. I got a lot going to the West Lake to call you and everything down else. West Wisconsin, down to Louisiana. Take one of the cards and call your friend. I love you. Oh, yeah. That first one for you, right? Well, they're working on it part at a time. Once they get that up and done up there, then they'll be working on it for years. Yeah. And get on the east coast the roads are like uh, you got to pay tolls to dodge potholes yeah that's one thing you know one of the things that they did. that's one of the things yeah. that, that's can wrong I yeah you can no you don't, have, you don't have to say you got to okay okay well, you know, that's one of the things that's wrong is the toll roads up there in the northeast you know that was the tolls were put in what in the 60s Okay. How long does it take for yeah, for people put it over to go through and pay a hundred dollars for truck? It'll run off battery and you switch over. You know, to run across 70, 80, uh, or yeah, seventy six and all that stuff up there. When's that toll gonna be paid? You know. Right. The thing is, you run from from Miami to New York uh, in a five axle semi. That's four hundred dollars. Yeah. In toll, and then you got a. Uh, Florida's got good roads, you know, there's no tolls, either Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. But when you get north of the 104 in Virginia, uh oh, that's that's bad news. Yeah. You know, that, that part of the country needs to do something on the roads. New York, New Jersey, there's drivers that will not go to New York and New Jersey. I won't go there. I'll quit before I go there. I'll go there. I might bitch you or <laughs> complain a little bit, but I'll go there. You better have some firearms in your truck. You can't stop at a red light in New York. Uh -huh. Well, I, I ain't never had no problems like that, but, you know, I guess everybody has different problems. Right. So what are what are some of the worst horror stories you've seen out there when you've been out there on the road? You know, you said some of the spots that you didn't want to go to and wanted to, didn't want to check out. Tell us <laughs> tell us some of the, the horror stories you've seen out there on the road as a truck driver. I've seen a lot. Well, hey, I don't know where you want to begin at. Hey. I made a wrong turn in New York City and went straight through Chinatown one day. Uh, that was that was messed up. Yeah, miss miss Mark Bridges at toll underpasses. Uh, uh, I mean, you get out in New York City and forget it. It takes you a good day to get in and out, get in, deliver and out. You yeah. can't play Hunts Point Meat Market, and you better have a weapon there. If you go there, you don't have a weapon there. Well, there's Nathan, Nathan, huh? Nathan, Nathan, all them up there. Jewish market up there? No, Hunts Point, Meat Market yeah. in the Bronx. Yeah. Now, that's bad stuff. Yeah, it is. I, I ran into a guy that woke the driver that backed into another truck and then tried to blame it on somebody else. And then uh, the guy came out and I said, hey man, you know, look at the paint on your truck. Right. And he comes to find out and then, then uh, everybody wants to fight, hit you two by fours, the rear end your face, all okay. kinds of stuff. I don't like going to New York. New York stinks. Okay. New Jersey, not bad. Anything north of the 104 in Virginia, not good. Not a good place to go. Out west, Midwest, like Texas here, that's a nice place. Uh -huh. You know, the roads are good. People uh, are pretty friendly. Louisiana needs some help on their roads. Yeah. But uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, North South Carolina, beautiful runs. Beautiful runs. I mean, that, you know, out. Out west, the roads are pretty much a, pretty good, you know. Uh -huh. and then you get around the cities, and they got a lot of construction, and you know, big trucks on on that. That uh, they got experimental pavement places where they try different things, and it's got potholes and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, I can remember the concrete plate highways, you know. You yeah. Have a lot of, you know, you don't. You don't. You don't. <laughs> I mean, uh, and her ride on the trucks is a major. Nice thing. Right. It's an improvement compared to what it used to be. Yeah, because I, I drove a 1980 KW, a cab over, uh, and I was going across Ohio, dodging potholes and busting the spray on the road. Uh, Ohio's got a 55 mile an hour limit for trucks. Illinois has got a 55 mile an hour limit for trucks. We're running across that, that area in the north there, we need to go a little bit faster because 
you don't understand, but but you get paid by the mile, and and going slower yeah. is a pay cut. Right. When companies turn down the trucks, that's a pay cut. Right. When they tell you you can't drive so far, that's that's a pay cut. Right. You know? And we've taken pay cut, and pay cut. With the bad economy, uh, they they cut out driver benefits. And that's that's something. It's like why yeah, my drive company it? don't have no benefits. You can't make a. You can't afford to go home. You want to go home see your wife, kids? You know, I wanted to go home see my daughter's wedding. No, I couldn't afford it. I had to drive. Right. And there's so many drivers out there only getting 12, 1300 miles right now. It, it's 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 unreal how how much that they actually are hurting. Right. So how do you feel about Obama's national health plan? Do you think that's going to help things out? I mean, like you said, so many companies are cutting back benefits and everything else like that. Do you yeah. think it's a good idea what he's talking about with that that uh, you know national health plan? Well, uh, before you. Say anything about that? I think you should watch a movie called Sicko. Okay. Uh, about all the people that wanted to approve uh, the health plan before. Right. And it lists everybody. I mean, it lists everybody, uh, like Hillary. Right. Uh, President Hillary, actually, because Billy Boy, Billy Bill job was no good. <laughs> but, uh, President Hillary. She was paid over six hundred thousand dollars by the drug companies to shut up, leave it alone. The drug companies are making so much money that uh, socialized medicine ain't going to work. Well, because they're going to have to take the pay cut. But it's worked in other countries. It's working in Canada. Yes, it's, it's working cool. over in Europe. So how do how, how do you think? I mean, we no, know we we, we know it, it can it's work, it's but what do we have to do to make it work here? Well, well, you and, can't do it like the other countries. The other Germany, countries, they, they take uh, a part out of your paycheck, just like we do. We take Medicare out. Right. Right? And that pays for everybody's free health care from the time you're born to the time you die. And we're ranked 63rd. The United States, the most powerful country in the world, is ranked 63rd uh, in medic medical. Right. And we have another thing. It's called we have a cure for cancer. Uh, Raymond Royal Ray invented the cure for cancer, uh -huh. and, and we can't use it. A doctor gets his, his license to practice medicine revoked if he use, uses the rape machine. And, it, and it's not like you're going to chemo because you don't glow in the dark at night. Your hair don't fall out. Now, it's a cure for cancer, but we can't use it. Why? Because cancer is too big a business. Right. I mean, uh, uh, Raymond Royal Ray, he went over to uh, the drug companies and said, I got a cure. I need money for my research. They said no. Simply because he told them everything that he told them that that rape machine did cut into their profits. Oh, man. So he went to the American Cancer Society. They told him cancer's too big a business. Look at all the hospitals and doctors and cancer institutes that we put out of business because of that. But you can Google it, Raymond Royal Rape, the rape machine. Uh huh. Rape machine, however you want to pronounce it. There's a cure for cancer. No, our socialized medicine, in order for that to work, you've got to get these politicians to stop taking bribes, stop padding their pockets, taking the drug companies' money. You can't stop it. We can't. You've got to get an honest one, and an honest politician. That's an oxymoron. Uh -huh. Honest politicians don't like no money, so they work. Yeah, it's all about money. You, can't, you gotta get somebody else. But uh, you know, the thing I don't, I, I, I see some good things about nationalized health care. Uh -huh. I'm an American. If I get sick, I think America ought to take care of me. But at the same time, if I'm, if I go in and I have an appendicitis or I need something kidney or something like that, you know, I don't want to be put at the bottom of the list, you know, and, and have to wait six months, you know, whatever, to get a surgery or something like that, because, you know, everybody's on a wait list, so right. people die like that, that's not, there's good and bad parts about it, you know, I don't know how much it costs, you know, for, uh, for them to get, for nationalized health care, 
Well, if they do it like Germany, they're going to take it out of your pension, just like Medicare. They're doing that now. They're taking it out of our pension. Yeah, but then they say it's that bad word called socialized med uh, socialism and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, we're socializing everything anyway. You know, our government is. They, they, yeah, they're they're, 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 they're fixing the other companies and helping all the banks. They're under one bank. You know, it's, uh, it's scary, but I don't know. I think America is a great country, and we can figure out how to fix ourselves. It's just going to take time, and we're going to have to suffer through it. So, do you think America is willing to suffer through it to do that? I mean, you know. I think we've been living high on the hog uh, right for sure. so long, we're you know. Grass, man. You know. Well, I got more shit in my truck than most people have in their house. Everybody's got well, not most true. people, but a lot of people. Not yeah. just the poor people, the working class, but the rich people too. Everybody's got to do it. Yeah. Hell, I got a fridge, a microwave, a computer, a TV, you know, a CB, a XM radio, satellite radio. Right. That's Back in the 80s, all you had was AM, FM, cassette. Yeah. And a Maybe. CB radio. Yeah. And two windows down at 55 if you were lucky. You know? Right. So we, we, uh, and all the little toys and gadgets we got at home, you know, we're, uh, we're still a country. You know, we know we are. But I think, I think every American would suffer a little bit if it actually, you know, wouldn't mind suffering a little bit if it actually solve a problem. What's up, Barbecue Man? You gonna come join our show today? It's broadcasting live on the internet. We're broadcasting right now, man. What's, what's wrong? You got warrants, man? Oh, what up? Oh, they got a Barbecue Man. He running off on us, man. Come on back, Barbecue Man. <laughs> but I, you know, I don't know. I can't really say how bad chucking is because for me it's not really that bad. Uh -huh. I enjoy my job. I got, you know, I just work for a good company for my situation. So, all right, let's give a little plug for your company. First of all, tell us who you are and what company you work for so everybody can know what great company you work for. And your boss will know who's been plugging his company so he can, you know, compensate a little bit better when you get those good drivers calling trying to call in. I work for SEMO Express out of Sykes, Missouri. Okay. I'm John Penny. All right. And what's the name of your, your owner, your operator, the guy that you work for? Uh, the owner of the company, his name is David Richards. Okay. And if they, they want to come work for a good company uh, like David Richards has, who, who would they call or how would they get in contact with David Richards? I'll give you their phone number. Yeah, go ahead. Tell it out over the air, man. Uh, He's going to get prank calls from all over the world. Oh, that's all right, he man. Might. He, might. he might. He might actually get some good drivers. You know? That list is better than none. 888 481 9481 and ask for Tony Killing. Okay. That's if you want to work for a good small truck driving company, right? Yeah. All right. And that's out of Southeast Missouri. All right, out of Southeast Missouri. You guys run coast to coast or just regional or no? Local? Right now, uh, they only run pretty much from Texas to Georgia up to Wisconsin. There's no North Coast. You know, you don't have to mess with that once in a while in Chicago. You don't have no West Coast. You don't have to go to the East Coast. I don't, not no more, I don't. I lived up there when I worked this morning. But, uh, I don't have to no more. That was, that's, why, that's one of the main reasons I really wanted that job. Is I get home more. I'm home every weekend. Yeah. Usually once or twice a week, and I'm still turning between twenty-five and thirty-two hundred miles. All right. It's just a set rate of thirty-five cents a mile. There ain't no, there ain't no going up or down. You just hire it at one certain rate, and that's what it is. Now, how do they do that? They do that by the miles you travel, or do they do it by the shortest miles that are predicted out there? Well, yeah, short miles. Uh huh. Which I mean, you take about a five percent cut in miles. You know, that's just. That's almost every company, not all of them, but a lot of them. I don't have no complaints. I got money in the bank, you know, and my kid's pretty schooled. <laughs> and that's, about, that's what it's about, you know. 
Yeah, it's all. I can go home, I can go to the lake or to the river. I don't have no worries. Yeah, it's all about the family and the little ones back home, you know, trying to make things better for them. I guess that's about all I got to say. Man. Okay. What's your name? Now I gotta get some sleep. Can I get one more from you before you go? Yeah. One more smoke from you? Oh, yeah. Or menthol? Yeah. Thanks, man. What was your name? My name is Claude. My Claude. friends call me Trey. Like I said, I gave you one of my cards, right? Yeah, I got two. All right. Check it out. You know, go to the website. Got a great deal, like I said, on those uh, both cell phones and also on uh, the webcam phone. So when you're out on the road, allow you to stay in contact with your family so you can talk to them and see them every night if you want. Cut down on your phone bill because by being able to hook, at a, uh, hook up at a truck stop, where they got uh, internet connection or something like that, you can dial right in and it's not going to cost you anymore. Alright. Uh, well, that's what we do. We're running on basically Yahoo Messenger. Right. And uh, Joe Lee's got a webcam in the house. Uh huh. I got a webcam in the truck. Yeah. Uh, that's what I tell a lot of folks. It's best to do it like, like that. And if you can't do it like that, because you know, a lot of people don't aren't up on the technology with the cameras and that's one of the great things about our company is we do it all simple. You sit up here and dial the number and they got a webcam on the other side and it pops up with your picture and you can talk and see them. They just got a cell phone or a regular phone and it still connects the same. Well, I had a computer store in Naples uh, for about 13 years. I had a computer business. But I, I see a driver out here having a problem I can help him out. Yeah. But, uh, I'm I'm all for open source and free. Yeah, know? and uh, that's why these drivers go out there with Windows and Vista and everything. I'll give them a Linux CD, free CD. Here you go. They'll see everything in the computer, and, and they, they don't have to spend a lot of money on software because open source is free. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the things I like now. You know, I, I'm I'm trying to share with it and show a lot of the drivers. Uh, cell phones that have the internet access and everything else so they can keep track of what's going on, keep up with your emails. I got a new Blackberry. I love it, man, because all your email accounts can be tied right into that. You find out it instantly. You got your maps in there. i will give you point A to point B so you keep track of your mileage. You That's are, right, yeah. uh, keep track of your receipts. I tell folks, you know, you get a camera phone, you know, one of the first things, or one of the reasons why they invented those little mobile phones is take pictures of documents. So take pictures of your receipts. File them away, you know, electronically so when it comes time to do your taxes, you got them all right there. You don't have to go dig into the shoebox. You just download the information to your tax guy, and he's got all the information right there he needs to help you get the maximum tax return. I like, uh, there's, a, there's a program, it's called Trucker's Helper, and, uh, they're out of West Palm Beach, Florida, and then you can do your logs on the laptop and your routes, and they'll keep track of, of if it's been paid and like if, if this one trip shortage of three bucks or whatever. Uh, it'll keep track of that. So that's pretty good. And then you, it uh, interfaces with, with Quicken and QuickBooks. Right. So that, that's good for truckers. A lot of companies doing uh, per diem pay now, uh -huh. which is. Uh, like the companies I work for, they say per diem is beneficial for you uh, because you get paid. Yeah, yeah you get paid uh, uh, a certain amount per mile, but then if you go per diem, they, they cut that in half. Uh -huh. So instead of paying you, say, uh, 30, 31 cents, they pay you 15 cents, you know, and you get cash on the other part. But uh, it, it hurts you on the long run for Social Security because you don't pay into Social Security with half your money. Right. Uh, you know, Social Security is going to be gone anyway, but uh, Trucker's Help is a good program for, for drivers and stuff. Um, laptop is definitely a must. Laptop or a good smartphone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because when you think about it, man, all that stuff is, is shrinking down to the cell phone size now. And if you don't buy one of these phones on a plan, you, you see how much, because they almost cost as much as a laptop now. Yeah. Okay. 
you get per diem and stuff, and then the company charge. You know, companies have to pay. They have to, have to match your payroll taxes to the government. So if they pay you per diem. You only have to pay half the taxes, and they want to charge you two and a half cents a mile to pay these taxes. You know, and when they have to, they get a break on that, but they're charging the driver. Right. So they're, they're double dipping more or less. You know, and that's that's a pay cut too because you get gypped at a two two and a half cents a mile. But they say, oh, it's a hard times. We got to do it. And uh, with hard times, you know, you got to take these pay cuts. You got to take all the crap that they give you. Otherwise, you're out of a job, you know. And they'll find some student uh, that's willing to drive the truck. You know, never never been in a truck before. Just went to truck driving school. And you can tell them because they're the dangerous ones on the road. The trainers, uh, uh, sometimes you get good trainers, you know, that will not release them. But the trainers get paid to push these people through 30 days of training and then out the road. Right. And uh, that, that's a dangerous thing sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it was on the news today where they were talking about some companies are asking uh, employees to work for free. I think British Airways is asking their employees, uh, you know, give up a week's worth of their time to work for free uh, just to help, help the company stay afloat. How do you feel about that? Yeah, we, we're doing that already. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's not a week's worth of time, but the... the the large pay cut that we're taking. I mean, you got to stay out on the road a uh, month and a half, uh, and then you get to go home. Uh, it's like, I want to go home for Father's Day. But right. So I can see my wife and kids. Right. No, I, they're not going to get me home on time. They're not going to get you home on time. No. No, they get, they get me home. Uh, I want to do a, a bigger, been out a month and a half. I want to do a couple of days before Father's Day, and then maybe a day after Father's Day. Uh, you think they'd get me home? No. They'll get me home uh, Saturday. Well, you know. But they say uh, you get one day off for every week uh -huh. you're on the road. So, month and a half, you figure it out. How many days do I get? Four days, right? How many days am I getting? Four? No. Are you month getting and a half is six. Right. Month and a half should be six days. How many days are you getting? Four. Yeah. And then probably then you're probably going to get in at midnight and have to leave. At midnight on that day, so you really probably only gonna get three. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have to be at the shipper uh, first thing in the morning, so I'll have to leave at midnight. And uh, it's a shame, it really is. So, have you always been a truck driver, or what other type of work have you done? No, uh, I got out of the military and I started driving. I figured the military showed me Southeast Asia, uh -huh. and uh, I want to see what the country was like. So I, uh, I got into truck driving, then I got out of that in the mid-80s and went into computers. Right. I had a computer business, which uh, was very profitable. Uh, and in 2000, I started driving again. Okay. So would you recommend it for, you know, like a family member or your kids or something to go into truck driving? Or would you say, yeah, it's in the career that you should well, be going into? It used to be a, a really nice. The trucks have improved. They've got a lot of uh, uh, luxuries in there that, that they didn't have. I mean, they, they ride nicer. And, uh, to be an owner-operator, no. you know, unless you got some companies you're already hooked up on some routes or something, it, it doesn't pay anymore. Owner-operators are getting hammered and cool guys. Uh, you know, you, there's certain states you can't idle your truck in. You know what it's like in Texas in the summer? Oh, oh yeah. It gets hot. Yeah, it's hot right now. We're out, yeah. we're both out here sweating yeah, our ass off. And, and uh, you know, you can't idle your truck, you ain't got no air conditioning. Right. Alright, so then they offer these uh, uh, idle air and stuff well, like APUs, that. Well, APUs, right? That you can buy and put on a truck. But they charge you a fortune. I went, uh, my company screamed. You know, oh, you know, I, Save cost, save cost. I went to them with a uh, APU solution that it would, would cost max twenty five hundred dollars max. Explain to the folks that aren't truckers what an APU is and how that works. Uh, an APU, the trucks nowadays they use a lot of electricity. 
uh, even when they're turned off. They, I mean, the computer's in it, it's active all the time, there's sensors, there's everything, and it pulls the batteries down. What an APU does is it gives you battery power. There's an engine in there, cranks up, and it, and it keeps the batteries charged. But uh, they also have an air condition hooked up to it, so at least while you're sitting there, you don't, you're not roasting. Uh, and in the wintertime, they, they've got a heater. Uh, but they, uh, like Thermal King, they charge $8,900 for one. You know? And uh, when I bought my truck in 2000, I, you know, I had a, a APU that I built. Because uh, a computer background, I, I knew about the stuff. Plus the trucking a little bit. And uh, about $2,500 I can build it. And I'll keep nice and cold. Uh, it's very quiet. You know, it's a, it makes sense, but the companies they're gonna want to hear that. You know, they they can't think out of the box. And if you're an owner operator, think out of the box. Uh, instead of going with a Thermal King APU, try a DC air cooler. You know, it's a 12 volt air conditioner. You put it on the truck and runs off your batteries. You get 10 hours of uh, cool time, and it'll shut down before it drains your batteries. And that's that's uh, like twelve hundred bucks, you know, eighty nine hundred, twelve hundred. Don't take a rocket scientist. Yeah, and just think about what you're saving on your diesel fuel, your exactly. island. And, you know, everybody's trying to think green now, especially with the diesel, all the stuff uh, CO two is putting in the air and everything else. So, good way to save that. It's said. Now, tell me, I would think that with all the surface area you guys got with the trailers and everything else, that it'd be some type of uh, hybrid electric engine you can work or, or use to help uh, save the environment, save fuel costs and everything else. You think that's where the trucking industry is going now? Well, uh, these companies like that one and that one, uh, they change trailers all the time. Uh -huh. So, I mean, to put solar panels or something on the top, uh, unless it's your truck, not really going to work. Unless it was like legislated that all of them had to have or something like that. Yeah, but then what are you going to do about flatbeds or RGNs or Land Arc? They're, you know, they're, they haul equipment. You can't have it on that. Well, it would be a start with all these uh, cabs that we got. I mean, all these trailers we have out here. You know, it, it, you think, I would think it would be a good start. Yeah, uh, something like that. I mean, there's uh, we're making breakthroughs, and, and you know, some of the smartest people in the world are right here in this country. Uh, there, there's smart people all over the world, but uh, we have some of the smartest. Uh, we can do it. We can do it with the right incentive, you know, the right kind of uh, funding and backing for, for research and development. Because that's where the cost is, research and development. So you think you can have it, we just got to do it. How's it going, guys? You want to come on over? We're doing a trucker show over here. You want to come on and add your two cents about what's going on? Well, you can go around the front side and they'll let you in over there, but the back part of the shop is closed. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's uh, like that husband and wife team. Right. For somebody whose husband and wife want to get out and see the country, it's not bad. You know, trucking is not bad because it has some, some nice ones. Uh, I would definitely not recommend the Freightliner. There's no insulation in it whatsoever. Uh, uh, go with something like a, a Packard, you know, Kenworth, Peterbilt, Western Star. One of, some of the good trucks that have heavy insulation. Because uh, then your AC doesn't work so well. But there's, there's ways to save money out there. Uh, fuel cost is, is a, a big big thing, especially for owner operators. You know, those guys need to break. That's mom and pop that, you know, the backbone of the country. Right. Uh, not these big companies. They're the, they're the ones that really need to break. Now, what company? Are you uh, independent or do you work for uh, a no, I used to be an owner operator, but uh, now I've, uh, thanks to Hurricane Wilma, uh, we had to move out of Florida and moved up to Tennessee. Okay. There's no hurricanes and no mosquitoes in Tennessee. <laughs>
Yeah, it seems like a lot of people are uh, getting away from the coastal areas since it seems like the, the oceans are rising. We're losing a lot of coastal areas like that. Yeah. Well, uh, some of it I, I uh, really can't say I'd be sorry to see go. <laughs> Which parts of the country would that be? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. If I had my way, all them new states with the new in it, like New York, New Jersey, New England, you know, they could just crack off all the ocean. That'd be fun. Uh, Miami. It's, Miami was a beautiful place to grow up. But when Carter accepted all the, the prisoners from Castro's uh, jails, uh -huh. the crime rate in Miami doubled overnight. Really? And it was not a nice place to be anymore. I grew up in Miami. It was, uh, used to be beautiful. Uh huh. Uh, hold on. Lost our battery here. Hold on. You out of time? No, we're not out of time. It's out of juice. <laughs> uh, switch over right quick. I hope you're editing, man. No, this is going out live just like this right now. We might edit it later, but right now we're going live. There we go. We're back on now. I can tell my wife to go to that website yeah you can tell her go to the website and check it out definitely want her to do that once you tell your friends everybody else tell them to come on out and check it out tune in next week if you're not here and not not able to make it we want you to come on uh, and be in the viewing audience and check it out and tell your friends and family to come check it out with us that's the whole idea we want, we want this to build and we want people to know what we're doing and what's going on out here. We want them to know your stories and, and be able to uh, help make a difference. I mean, like I said, you guys are like the blood vessels running in a body. You guys are taking everything that is needed where it needs to go. So if you guys are hurt, the country as a whole is hurt. Yeah. Well, like the other guy said before, if we could use truck stops with better parking, you know, uh, uh, Petro. Uh, the Petros, they have nice parking. They have nice driver facilities, too. And the TAs, but, uh, the pilots and the loves, they're just uh, basically a, a, a convenience store with fuel pumps, you know? Right. I, I've seen some ones with no truck parking whatsoever, or three truck parking, you know? Just enough for you to get in, stop for a minute, get what you need, and then they want to put you back out on the road. Huh? Yeah, yeah, because you got... You know, you get in, you can't even take a shower there because there's no parking. You know, you want to go to some place that's got driver facilities, like uh, back in 1980, Union 76, you know, that was the big boy on the block, and, and TA was giving them uh, competition, but uh, everybody go to 76 truck stop, just to pull up to the pumps, uh, and the guy would come out to your truck, you tell him to fill it up, get the windows, you go in, get a cup of coffee, a piece of pie, Come out, pay for your fuel, you get a whole bunch of SNH green stamps, you know, or you can buy all kinds of stuff. I had a ton of those. You old timers remember that. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself now. Hey, aren't we all? But uh, I want to plug the company, Green Acres Towing and Transportation. They're in uh, Remus, Macosta, Michigan. Uh, it's a buddy of mine, uh, and he, he thinks pretty much uh, the same way I do, helping people. Right. And, uh, I mean, he's got big uh, tow trucks, 80-ton uh, tow trucks, rotators. He's got little tow trucks. Uh, and he's uh, thinking of uh, expanding down in Knoxville. Okay. But uh, that's a good company. They've got a shop. Uh, so if you ever get uh, stuck in Michigan somewhere and you're broken down, call them Green Acres Towing. That's right. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help plug the positive folks that are doing things out there. Well, that's a little little mom and pop organization, uh, and uh, that's a wonderful story. But we don't have time for that. Oh yeah, we we, we got a whole another hour. We're going till nine o'clock tonight. So let's hear what you got, man. Tell tell us tell tell our viewers the story that you got. Uh, Green Acres, a friend of mine named Milton. Uh, he met his old, he used to live in Florida and ran for a, a guy that, that just kept screwing.
screwed him over uh -huh. every turn around he could. Uh, so he met his high school sweetheart and went back to Michigan and married her and uh, uh, was taken right in uh, by the whole family. Uh -huh. Uh, I just kind of called him uh, Oliver Wendell Douglas from the Green Acres TV right. show, so, and uh, told him he should name it Green Acres, but uh, <laughs> I think that took off, and that's what he, he might have did. But the whole, it was a family outfit, and they expanded here and there, and uh, the uh, Alice and Pat's father, uh, Sam, uh -huh. uh, I never met him, but I, I heard he was a good man. Uh, he, he helped Milton take it off and uh, get a jump start. And, and uh, it's become a nice family going to business. Uh -huh. And they're, they're doing pretty good. But uh, if you ever get a, into a problem in Michigan, Remus and Lacosta, over down to Big Rapids and uh, all in that area, Green Acres Towing. All right. What's your. What's your most favorite area to, to travel, you know, I assume you've seen probably all of the lower 48 states. What, what's your best place to go or what, what's the place you like to haul the most with your load? Well, I've seen all the 48 states. <laughs> all the lower 48? No, all the 48, plus uh, Canada and Mexico. Okay, you made it up to Alaska? Yeah. All right, so 1981. C-49. And I know unless you got on, on some type I of... I've seen that in the military. Right, right. right. You saw Hawaii. Uh, I like running the southeast. Mm -hmm. Well, basically the south. Anything uh, uh, North South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, you know, Louisiana, Texas. And that, that's the roads are nice, you know. And... Uh, once you get out around Texas, expanding, but out in the west, there's hardly any freight. Uh, Everything is east of I-35. Uh, uh, I'm on a run now where I, I'll go from like uh, Kansas to North Carolina and back and forth, you know, uh, and, and that's really sweet. Uh, miss my family a real lot, but uh, we got to work for a living, you know. What's the biggest hardship you think truckers face out here, and, and how can we try to overcome that? Uh, there's, there's a lot of them. I, I don't know what the biggest would be. I have to say home time. Uh -huh. uh, companies promise home time. They promise more miles. They promise uh, good pay. They promise benefits. <coughs> Unfortunately, the country, the way it is, Benefits have disappeared. Uh, the miles are still there, but the pay is, you know, you have to take pay cuts. Uh, the company just doesn't seem to care about the driver. They'll, they run him, they'll run him until he's burnt out. And then uh, when he, you know, he can't do anything more, uh, he quits. And they'll put another person in there, you know. And they don't realize what they're getting into until they're about a year into it, uh, so you got to find a good company. And what do you think of the best companies out there? What would you like, if you could rate them, what would be the uh, top five that you would rate company-wise out there? Well, it seems the smaller companies help, or better, because uh, they do, it's the personal touch. Okay. You know, the big companies, like I said, you're a number. Uh, they don't care about you. They're, they'll run you until they burn you out and then throw you to the wayside and uh, get somebody else. Smaller companies uh, with shorter runs in, in, in uh, just, you know, like just the two states around where they're based out of, they seem to be the best. Uh, they, they definitely seem to be the best. That sounds good, man. Appreciate you joining us out here. Anything else you, you know you want to share with the viewing public out here? Or about like I said, about your adventures or about your tale. You know, most of the time you just got a CV. You're stuck behind broadcasting in that small area. Now it'll give me an opportunity to broadcast to the world. Uh, well, I'd like to say, uh, Tina, I'm sorry I missed your wedding. Um, I had to go out to work. Uh, that's. Uh, that's 
wife and kids that miss them. I'll be home for Father's Day. Yeah. Hey, look into the camera and give that message to the wife and kids, man. Here's your opportunity. How's it going, man? You gonna join us yeah, for our truck TV show? Right, I ain't really got time. <laughs> oh man, come on. Huh? I was just telling my son to turn the music up. All right, turn the music up. You yeah, can't go in that way. You got to go around to the other side, man. You might as well stop and say a message to the friends and family back home. He's four years old. He's the, uh, getting into the music now. Oh, okay. All right. What type of music does he like? Well, it's a, it's the ones that they get uh, when you get McDonald's Happy Meal. The, right. the ones for, for kids, and the kids are actually singing. Uh, I listen to it. It's pretty good music. Is he a big Jonas Brothers fan? You know the Jonas Brothers are going to be in concert uh, this Saturday up at the new Cowboys Stadium. Have you got a chance to go by there yet and see that? No. Uh, I, I, like, I, I might sit for a day, you know, like, like now, and I load up 7 o'clock in the morning and head to the East Coast again. Okay. Uh, but, no, my son, he's into uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, there you go. He's four. They should have a new one of those coming out, if not this year, next year, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Run out of things to say. That's okay. You know, we're out here talking. We'll, we'll fire up the CB radio so we can get a few more truckers out here. Fire that up in a minute. we got about uh, 45 more minutes to fill before we lose our daylight. And, uh, Lose her time, and my wife starts looking for me back home if she's not already watching me on, on the internet. When they go to that website, what what they click on to get this? If, uh, on the card, go to the website ustream uh, TV forward slash poetic images, and then just uh, the name of the show is called Breaker Breaker. So you go down the list of the shows on there, and, and you'll see it on Breaker Breaker, and we'll have a recording of what tonight's show was. Big Dog, come on over and talk to us for a minute, man. Chrome Shop's closed. Guy left. We're out here doing a little TV show advertising for him and all, and, and just trying to tell you tell the stories of the open road trucker. Man, have a seat and talk to us for a minute, man. Oh, you already on the air? You already on the air? Come on, man. Come on, man. Sit over on that side, man. Man, you got time, man. Sure you do. Sure you do. You can't get into the chrome shop. Yeah, that's why I'm going to take the chrome real quick. Uh, well, all right. Well, come on back and join us next Wednesday, man. Take one of the cards here so that you can come back and check check us out. Even if you can't make it, you can check us out on the web. You can want to take one of your friends, man. Pass it on up, all right? What do you mean? Just normal laptop. We'll get running on uh, Ustream, being able to cover what's going on and cover the drivers out here. And cover, uh, like I said, just trying to cover your stories and document what's going on on the road for you guys. No. Zoom in on these guys over here. Maybe we can get them to come on out and join us. We're out here at the Chrome Shop, covering the Trucker Tales, the show Breaker Breaker. You guys, come on out and join us. We're about to fire up the CB radio, see if we can get a couple more drivers out here to join us. You need to go to Chrome Shop, Mafia's Chrome Shop. Where? Where's that? Uh, Not where? Joplin. Oh, job in Missouri? Yeah. Well, see, I'd love to do that. That's, take, a, that's a hell of a nice chrome shop. I, I, I'd love to ride one of you guys take the show on the road, man. You know, just go out and do a day trip or something like that. Check out things. Tell the stories out there and give them to everybody. Well, you know, there would be a, an interesting uh, reality show. Exactly. Because if you go to, you know, you call it the life of a trucker and call it whatever you want to call it. Like, uh, you go from shipper. Uh-huh. Hey, man. What over here, Troy? Sitting all off camera and all. Come on. What up? Hey, you go out there and 
see what how something's being made. Right. And then where it goes in the you know the resale and stuff, because everything moves by truck. It don't matter what it comes in by boat, by airplane, it's gotta move by truck somehow. Exactly. Break one nine, we're out here at the uh, Galaxy Chrome shop inviting you truckers to come on out and join us on the air. We're, we're uh, filming live right now, broadcasting over the internet TV show called Breaker Breaker, trying to cover you truck driver stories and connect you with your family and friends back home. So come on out here at the Speed Max Galaxy Truck Shop and join us on the air. Anybody got a copy on this radio out there? All right, come on over here to the Speedmax Galaxy uh, Chrome Shop and join us on the air. Call your friends back home and tell them you're going to be a TV star broadcasting to the world over the Internet. Uh, I got a good heavy lens in there. I don't think you break it. Come on, I know we got some of these drivers out here in this parking lot. Y'all need to get on out of those trucks. Come on over here and talk to us. Tell us your tales. Tell us your stories. Tell us what's going on out here on the road, what's broken, what needs to be fixed. Here's your chance to get that message back to Obama. Well, tell us your worst DOT story. Uh, go ahead and give that DOT officer that gave you a hard time. Give him a hard time on the air. Well, come on out here and tell your story, get it on the air, and uh, let us know what's going on. Barbecue, man, you need to set on up out here at the Chrome Shop, man. Serve up the plates with these drivers out here. time here. We got a little bit left. Come on, I never know you truck drivers to be shy. Come on out here and get some face time as well as some air time. Alright man, I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Grab one more from me. 
appreciate you joining me out here today. Like I said, we, we recorded it, so it'll be on the on that page for you to check out. When will it be on that page? It's on there now. Now? The live live stream is on there now. And uh, after I finish the recording, I'll label the show. It'll be up so you can watch it back on the net. You can call your wife and tell her to check it out. I'm going to call my buddy. Call, call him now. Tell him to check it out. Yeah, because he's on the road with his wife, you know. Yeah. Good deal, man. We're going to be doing it out here and get it pumped up. Get some, get some of you guys out here watching. That one right there? Yeah. Uh, yep, that one right and here. And then just go to Breaker Breaker? Breaker Breaker. Where is it on your page? This is what it's going to look like on the home page. See, that's what, what's broadcasting right now. See, so putting that up there. Everybody knows what I'm looking for. How to find this scan, where it is. Appreciate it, man. Like I said, well, I think this that's a good idea you got there. I'm trying, man. And whenever you guys are ready to either upgrade your cell phone service or something like that, check me out. I can give you a great deal on your cell phone rate. Same place. Same place. Well, go there. Uh, go to the uh, one that's uh, the MySpace page, and you'll see the link on it that says uh, Five Links .net forward slash Globe Trotter. Go there. It's got all our products and services, communication wise. It's so even got the uh, video phone as well as discount rates and cell phones. We, we beat the rates on your, your standard cell phone carrier. You have the service too? Yeah. Our contracts are either comparable or better to what the uh, carrier you have. With Verizon? Right yeah. Uh, we have everybody but Verizon. Yeah. But I, I tell folks go to BillShrink.com, compare the rates you got for Verizon on your plan with the other ones. And if Verizon wins, give me a call because I got a girl that works for Verizon. She'll hook you up on a good deal. But if I can, if one of the other companies I represent can beat it, let me hook you up. Well, the problem is when you're driving out down there, you run into so many dead spots. Exactly. So you almost need more than one cell phone just to cover the dead areas. Well, like I said, I was in the computer, so there's a there's a solution around that, uh -huh. and that's a it's an antenna. It's forty nine bucks. And an amplifier and that'll reach out with your cell phone connected that'll reach out 66 miles to the next tower uh -huh. and then even in utah which is a cell phone on a friendly state it works right that's really well okay uh, well that's one of those things that we want to share with the drivers that's one of the reasons why i'm doing this show is so that you know any tips that we have to make things better for us all we want to try to get that done so that we can make it better for everybody out here yeah. man it's about $149, give or take, because you can find it, you know, someplace to send more and some right. less. But uh, it's the amplifier and a Wilson antenna. Uh, and with the amplifier, you don't even have to have your cell phone connected to it. Uh -huh. Just be within 100 feet of your truck, and you got full signal strength. Okay. Now, that's good. Unfortunately, I'm one of them truck drivers that can't afford it. I know about it, but I can't afford it. Right, I understand, man. I'm one of those non-truck drivers that can't quite afford it. Oh, and as a non-truck driver, don't pull in front of the truck. You give it plenty of room. Oh, I know. They're coming down a hill with 80,000 pounds. I know, man. You got a lot of four-wheelers to pull out in front of you and then slow down. It's like, no, that's a good recipe for disaster. You know, they get squished. Yeah. Not the thing I want to do. I've, I've done my best. I mean, I respect you guys and what you're doing and the loads you got to carry and everything else. So I don't do that. And like the, the students nowadays, they don't understand the old light codes or nothing, you know, the, the courtesies of the road. Uh, when you pass them at night, you, you know, it's hard to see back there and you don't know how whether you've got room to move over or not. And uh, they used to they'll flip their lights on, you know. Like right. Students nowadays don't do that. You know? There's other light codes like you're in trouble on the side of the road, three blinks, you know, and someone will stop. Now they won't even ask you, you know, if you on got the radio. On the road. Huh? No, they just keep on riding. Of course, a lot of it's uh, times now because, you know, a lot of people trying to jack your loads and stuff. It's a shame they made it so it's not even comfortable where you can help somebody out now and be proud. I, I mean, I carry a full 
uh, set of tools in my truck to stop and help a four-wheeler change a tire or pop some air up or, right. or whatever. Even plug the tire. And I, I, I still do that. You know, I did a lot more when I had my own truck. But uh, now I'm a company driver and it depends on what kind of load I got I can't stop. Right. I can understand that, man. Well, what's your name one more time? Tony. Tony, I appreciate you, Claude Trotter. I appreciate you visiting with us. And like I said, check us out on the web and you know, we'll see if we can get some more drivers out here involved and make this thing big for all of us. I would tell them to go to that, that website. Please do, Tony. I appreciate it, man. You, you, uh, you tell him you got a hit counter on there? Yeah, we got a couple of hits on here. It looks like my wife just tuned in. Hey, sweetie, I'm glad you, you're watching. She just tuned in, and we had somebody else. We got one other guest that's checking us out tonight so far. And like I said, hopefully you will uh, tell your other friends about it. We get a few more folks up here to talk to and kind of go from there. Take care, man. All right, you too, man. What's up, man? How you doing tonight? Hey, you want to sit on in with us, tell us a little bit about what's going on uh, out there in the trucking world for us? You got to go around front. They, they, got, they got the chrome shop closed off, man. You don't want to sit down for a minute with us, man? Uh, they got the chrome shop closed down, but they're still open inside. They're selling sandwiches. You can walk around front and get everything else. Well, we're out here now watching the sunset in Dallas, Texas, trying to get a few more truckers out here to join us. Break one eye for these drivers up here at uh, 470. Come on over to the Speedmax Galaxy uh, Chrome Shop, taping a live show out here called Breaker Breaker, telling those trucker tales out here. I want you to come on out and join us tonight. Go to uh, www.u, the letter U, stream.tv forward slash poetic images. Yeah, but if you tune in, you'll see a live shot of us broadcasting live. You can come on over, you can call your family and friends and get a personal message out to them. Wish your father a happy Father's Day or let your family see you back home and they can call in and talk to you on your phone and uh, see you and uh, how you doing out here on the road. Yeah, but they won't be able to see you. You know, one of the things that they miss is seeing Papa for Father's Day. Uh, yeah, but not everybody does, and we got a webcam, laptop out here, and we're broadcasting out to the world, not just to those personal ones. I don't know about the no horse website. 
I'm out here. I have something tells me they ain't, they're not probably going to try to rob you. They might try to tr try to take something else from you. Come on over here and talk about them lot lizards, man. Let's hear some lot lizard tales tonight. It's all quiet on this radio, man. Ain't nobody talking, trying to do anything out here tonight. I got a little lot lizard patrol here going on now. Another beautiful night out here in Dallas, Texas, out here at the Dallas uh, Galaxy Chrome Shop. Doing what we can to cover the stories out here in Big D, out here in the trucking land.
come on out here to the Galaxy Chrome Shop and join us for our trucker show. Come on out and join us tonight. We're here at the Galaxy Chrome Shop, right over here with the subway sign is. Come on, join us for our last 20 minutes of our uh, internet TV show, Breaker Breaker. Got to switch back over to the other microphone here, get some of that background noise out the way with all those trucks. <laughs> it's finally cooling off here tonight in Dallas. We had about a 90 degree day out here. We're looking over at the Galaxy Chrome Shop, seeing some of the some of the things that's going on out here tonight. Trying to get some of the truckers out here to join us. We had a couple of truckers that joined us early tonight. Had a good little conversation about what's going on out here. Trying to get a few more out here to join us. Those of you guys tuning in, we, we're we sponsored by uh, Five Links. Uh, this is the old uh, website up there. Go to our page, give us a call, we can help you out on your communications needs. And love to help save you some money, help connect you to you and your family and your friends. Help make things easier for you while you're out there on the open road. Uh, come on, drivers, we need to come on out and join us tonight. Break one night for these drivers that are out here in this uh, Galaxy uh, Chrome shop. Come on up, 
Come on up to the front door, the back door here, and join us on our TV show. We've got another 15 minutes. Love to hear your stories out there. Give you a chance to talk to your family and friends back home. Yeah, I've got a couple of lizards hanging out out here. I'm, I'm sure we can uh, hook you up on something like that as long as you wrap up and strap up. Uh, that would be highly recommended. Yeah, come on over here. Uh, they're kind of some buffalo girls, but they uh, they got some blue on. I'm sure we can hook you up with something. Now, come on over here. Uh, talk, and I, I can point them out and show you what, what you're looking at. Now we got one over here in blue. We got her on camera for you right now, at least a piece of it. Come on over and tell us your best lot lizard tale. What's up, man? Come on over and join us for our TV show. Come on, man. We got about 15 more minutes. Come on over. I uh, still got a few more spots over here at the da uh, Galaxy Chrome shop. They're filling up fast, though. So. We got show number two here, Break Breaker, last week. You can check it out. We had uh, Miss Liz Michaels. Actress, singer, film star that was out here joining us for the inaugural show. We got your host right here. Call me Trey. Out here running a one man show tonight. Looking for those drivers to come on out and join us. For our viewers out there checking us out, just want to say thank you for your support. Come on back next week. All right, I know you drivers that just pulled in and parked out here at the Galaxy Chrome shop. I've got your radio on, so come on down and holler at us for a minute. Uh, got about two more minutes to be on the air. Come on down and say your father's day hellos and uh, talk to your friends and family back home. Come on, you drivers, back your hide behind those radios. Come on out here and let's put a face in what you got going on. Tell us your stories, tell us your opinions, tell us your truth.
Guys out there in those trucks out here in this chrome shop, come on out here and join us on camera. So who is me? What's your name, girl? Come on over here and get on our Truckers TV show so you can do your advertisement worldwide. So why don't you come on over and talk to us on camera? Because everybody wants to see what they're going to get, girl. A quick advertisement for Swift right here. You got the Swift driver up here trying to turn around. Yeah, I got a copy on your barbecue man over there being camera shy. Uh, they're making their way through all right. This Swift driver just turned around in this lot. I ain't stopping anybody over here from doing what they're trying to do. How about that Swift driver? Go ahead, Bart, back in. Show them how you do your thing there. Yeah, expert backing and driving you do. Yeah, you got that uh, DFW TV, D TV man out here doing that uh, trucker TV show, Breaker Breaker, telling you trucker, trucker stories out there for you. That's the expert driver backing in here. Thank 
You guys just tuning in, check us out. We're going to have this rebroadcast set up. We had some interviews with some drivers earlier. Yeah, driver, they already closed. This uh, Galaxy Chrome shop closed about 7.30. Got a few more minutes on our TV show over here at the Chrome shop, though. So we're going to and say hello to your friends and family. And get on the air with this little lady. Huh? How you doing? What's your name, sweetie? Shane. Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Tell us a little bit about your tales out here. We're doing a little show called Breaker Breaker for the truckers out here. Well, that's all right. You can tell them you're out here helping me take my TV show. You're out here. They don't really like that. Well, you know, we'll be here covering it all for them. So. They won't have a choice but the light. I'm from Florida. I've been here for 12 years. Uh, I've been out here at the truck stop since they built it. Have you? And what do you enjoy about this truck stop? What, what keeps you coming back? Well, I used to be drugs, but I don't do any drugs anymore. You don't do any drugs anymore? So what keeps I you like coming? to eat, can't you tell? <laughs> <laughs> you got to step back a little bit. You're feeling the frame too much. They can't see what you're working with there, sweetie. All right, all right. Yeah, we got it all now. Come on back up here and tell us your story. Uh, let's see. What, what do you want to tell our viewers out there about this truck stop? This is a bad news truck stop. They need to stay away from the chrome shop. Why? Because they rob, steal, or anything else. Oh, man. You would, you, you're you not part of that robbing and stealing, no, huh? That's the reason I left the truck store. Okay, all I right. I come out and make my money for rent and leave. Oh, uh, okay, all right. That's what we do now. You have oh. a good one. <laughs> all right, you too. Well, this is Claude T. Ending another night out here uh, with Breaker Breaker. Uh, we're about to wrap things up here. We heard everything from uh, the truck drivers out here to the those that help entertain the truck drivers out here on the road. We invite you back next week, starting about 7 o'clock or so. We're going to try to start on time. We're running a little bit behind this time. But we'll be back next week telling more tales from the 18 wheelers more tales from the roads out here in america right here on break and breaker we invite you to come on back and join us and uh we'll see you next week and we're signing up signing off so until then keep the pedal to the metal and the rubber to the road and try not to hit us little four wheelers out there thanks for joining us tonight we'll see you next week and please check out our other website www the number 5 L-I-N-X dot net forward slash load trotter. We can help save you on your communication needs and help reunite those families to those truckers. Been out on the road too long. We do what we can to try to make sure 
you don't miss your loved ones growing up, don't miss those special moments like Father's Day coming up. Perfect time to upgrade your cell phone, perfect time to get that video phone so you can keep in contact with your loved ones back home. So check us out right here next week on uh, www.u, letter U, stream.tv, forward slash, that's the forward slash, uh, poetic images. Also check us out at uh, www. the number five linx. dot net forward slash globe trotter g l o b e t r o t t e r like the uh, Harlem Globe Trotters. And we'll see you here next Wednesday. Come on back every week and check us out as we give you the tales from the streets. From the truck drivers that help move everything we need across this great country and get it practically to your front door. So, for now, we're signing off. Have a good day.